We are all fellows in training and uh, we look up to all of you and, and we're very excited to see the hard work and the, the hard earned results that we take to the bedside for our patients. Do you have any advice for us, for the fellows in training on how to um, better design cardio-oncology trials and how to get involved in the cardio-oncology space? It's a great question and the first thing I would start with is the future is very bright. The opportunities are wide and many. The other thing I would, one can criticize any randomized clinical trial. If I was to stand back and look at STOP CA, which we just discussed, I would say we chose a surrogate endpoint. We chose greater than 10% decline in left ventricular ejection fraction to less than 55%. It is easy to say, well, why didn't you choose clinical heart failure? Why didn't you choose a decline in left ventricular ejection fraction of less than 50%? Why didn't you choose 40%? Why didn't you choose 30%? These are all reasonable questions. And what I would say in response is there's no perfect study design. You have to tailor your study design to the sample size and to the, to the ability to execute the study. A study whereby we use statins to prevent, cardiac dis uh, prevent clinical heart failure in patients with lymphoma would probably have a sample size of around 3,000 patients. To do that study would require really robust preliminary data due to the cost, the infrastructure required. So s designing a study is critical and thinking about your endpoints is really important. We chose this endpoint, greater than 10% decline, because we thought it would be clinically impactful. Other studies have talked about different metrics for the decline in left ventricular ejection fraction, 5%, 15%, less than 50, and there's value to all of those. These are all areas that need to be further researched. Thank you, Tom. Um, so a few words for the fellows. Um, first of all, general and then for cardioonc. So my general advice to the fellows, having had a career in both research and clinical, is research, research is tough, as we all know. So you have to be very persistent. You face a lot of rejection. We've all had lots of rejections. So don't get discouraged. Find good mentors. You don't need to have one mentor, you can have several mentors in different parts of your work and that will really help you. Um, and uh, work hard. <laughs> so that's the general advice. Uh, now, for the cardio-oncology, I would, I would say one thing is that, as Tom is saying, um, these, this is a population where the rate of event is not necessarily that high, but can be, of course, uh, very serious. Um, one way to approach it, to approach the research, is first to have a retrospective study, you know, for one of several centers, and get some facts on the ground about the prevalence or the incidence of different, um, you know, events what population seems to be most at risk, and then move on to the prospect of study. It's true that it's true for all research, but I think it's particularly acute in cardio-oncology. And in cardio-oncology, the other thing that is highly necessary for anyone who wants to go into cardio-oncology is a collaborative spirit. Because you're working with oncologists who don't necessarily have the same viewpoint as you have. You have to convince them. You're working with your colleagues because it has to be multi-center. You don't have that many events. So you have to be very collaborative. That would be my word of advice. Thank you so much. This is all wonderful advice. Want to add something? Yes, please. Uh, what Marielle said about uh, choosing the right mentor is critically important. I would ask two things, is that when you're thinking about a mentor in the cardio-oncology space, look at what that mentor has produced for other mentees. Does that mentor promote his mentees? Does that mentor advocate? Does that mentor make multiple opportunities? Do they try and make what is a very challenging life as easy, even though easy is not the right word as possible? Do they prepare them for a research life? These are all really important questions. Like Marielle said, 
we've all had our fair share of rejections. We still continue to get our fair share of rejections. And it may be easy for us to say, but resilience here is of extreme importance. My first 12 grants were all rejected. I was, a trans I was transitioning from a fellow to early faculty stage. It makes one think about, is this the right career? The reviews were very positive, but none of these grants were funded. And so I had a decision to make whether to go on and be a clinical cardiologist, which has phenomenal value, to be an imager, or to stay on the path and think of that path as both a researcher and a clinician. So resilience is key. Having a good mentor is key. Keep trying. That's the message. Because the questions are important. And the engagement from funding organizations like the National Institutes for Health is very high. Thank you so much for sharing all of that with us. We're all looking forward to, to hearing more and seeing more about the wonderful research that you've designed. And I'm sure that there's a lot more in the cardio-oncology space that hopefully we'll be able to explore together as a community. Thank you so much. And me and the FITS on the go, we're very lucky to have had you talk to us here today. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to see the full length of the videos, you can go to youtube.com slash fits on the go. Thank you for joining us.